My name is Julie Francois Campbell, but in the industry I'm known as Jay. If a person wanted to become a tailor, well, first of all, you need to work out what kind of tailor you want to be. A Savile Row bespoke tailor, military tailor, fashion tailor, or whether you're going to be a theatrical tailor. Now, being a theatrical tailor, for me, is the most exciting of all of them, purely because it covers all the others. Everything that the others do, you do that as well as the theatrical tailor and more. You'll get the crazy fabrics, you'll get the crazy shapes, you'll get the military shapes, you'll get the bespoke work, you'll get everything. A tailor constructs a garment from cut pieces of fabric which has been given to them. A cutter is a person who is given a set of designs and also a set of measurements for the particular people who are going to be wearing the garment and they've got to make a workable pattern which they then use to cut the fabric out. The difference is that the cutter is the person who creates the actual pattern for the tailor. The kind of training that a tailor would need first of all would be to choose art and design at school. Once they leave school then if they can get into a college or a university where they're doing costume interpretation which would have um, a module for tailoring. If they can get into a tailoring academy or into an apprenticeship with Savile Row or somewhere like that, that would be great as well. Once they leave that training, then they've got to find a company, a freelancer or any other institution that will train them up so that they, the information that they've been given, what they've been taught, they can actually practice it on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and they would probably need to do that for about three or four years before they can actually say that they are a tailor. If they're going to do cutting, there are courses out there as well where you can learn to do pattern cutting, but usually a cutter has to be a tailor before they can become a cutter. I tend to listen to quite a lot of music when I work, so when I'm doing paperwork, I tend to listen to classical music. If I'm actually cutting patterns, then I need to be on my feet and moving around, so I tend to listen to probably a little bit of radio. And also, if I know that I've got a deadline to meet, if I've got fittings that I need to do, then I crank it up into high gear. And um, I do listen to drum and bass music. I was inspired first and foremost by my father because he used to bring home the craziest garments you'd ever seen and um, he'd leave them on the dining room table and I'd, as a child I'd look at it and think what in heaven's name is that? Whatever it is, it's really interesting, I want to know more. Um, so that, that was an inspiration to me because back then you didn't see people doing those kind of jobs. You know, people were bus drivers, secretaries, you know, all that sort of thing. For someone to be in the arts was, in, on my street, was a bit of an anomaly. We were the strange family on the high street. So that, that gave me an insight into the fact that things don't have to be, you know, the way everybody else is. It could be different. Um, but also, I have been inspired by people like Vivian Westwood and Alexander McQueen because they look at things in a completely different way to everybody else. And that's how, how I see garments. I don't see just the garment. I see the story behind the garment, what the fabric's made of, where they got the inspiration from, how they're going to make that garment look different to everyone else's, how it's printed, how it's stitched. You know, so again, that's a great inspiration to me.